Hello all, welcome back. So we have completed the hardware design for the system using Xilinx VDMA IP core. So this time we are going to develop the software application. So I have already generated the bitstream. Now I'm going to export my hardware and I will include the bitstream also and I will launch the SDK. Now the software part is very similar to the software that we develop for DMA. So I'm not going to write the software line by line and explain. I already have the software developed, so I will use it, but I will explain you the important points. So we'll start a new application project. Let's call it PDMA test. Let's start a new C source and let's call it VDMA test. And I will just copy paste the code here. Okay, so at the top we have to include this header XXI VDMA, that is where the driver for XXI VDMA is sitting. We also need the header for the interrupt controller because we are going to operate based on interrupt also. So remember, VDMA is going to send us an interrupt once he finish sending one entire frame. At the top, again, I have declared the size of the frame, so 180 and 1920, and this is the frame size. So frame size, it is declared um, in number of bytes, okay? So, each pixel is three bytes for us, so that's why frame size is H size times V size times three. So this is our interrupt controller. This is the buffer in the DDR where the data will be stored. Okay, so this is declared as static array this time. I'm not using malloc, but instead I just declare it as a static array, and the size of the array is the frame size. So this is effectively the video frame in our DDR memory. Now, okay, so this part you already familiar, you are already familiar. This is similar to our DMA. So you declare a VDMA uh, instance this time and you have config and you have initialized config as usual. But one extra thing that you have to do here is there is one more structure here. So you can see XXC VDMA DMA setup. So this is a Different structure, and you can see it in declare xdma.h header file. So, the size of the frame that you are going to configure inside this structure. Okay? So, the vertical size you specify how many pixels, horizontal size you have to specify in number of bytes. Okay? So, that's why it should be h size times 3 again because our pixels it's RGB bytes per pixel and frame delay circular buffer enable synchronization these are all our, our default state and here is the config function like before we have initialize function and config function and here what i'm doing is uh, you need to store the starting address of your video buffers to this structure. Okay. For that there is uh, a, a array inside this structure called frame store start array. So this loop will be used for initializing the starting addresses. So remember in our hardware design when we generated the VDMA we specified like we have only one frame buffer. So this for loop will be running only once in that case. But uh, if you configure more than one, it will run that many times, okay, uh, until the maximum number of frames. So this maximum number of frames, it is coming from VDMA, and uh, he will be getting this value from your x parameters dot h, because there it is specified what is the maximum number of frames. For example, if I give VDMA here, yeah, so this is our VDMA instance. You can see here num f s stores. This is the parameter which is specifying how many frame buffers are there in the memory. So in our case, it is one, but if you have more than one, this for loop will initialize all those uh, addresses here. So the starting address of the first frame 
is the static address of my static array here. But if you have three buffers, you will write like three times frame buffer here. If you have four, you'll write four times frame buffer, so on and so forth. And you can see like after the loop, I am increasing this address by the frame size so that the next element in the array gets the address of the next frame. Okay? And after that, you need to pass this information again to VDMA. For that, again, we have this function, XXA VDMA, DMA set buffer address. So you have to pass the pointer to the VDMA and the pointer to the structure where you have configured all this information and this array also. This array. Okay, so this is a constant which is specifying the direction of the DMA operation. So remember previously we had memory to DMA, DMA to memory for uh, X uh, DMA controller. Here, Silings they are calling it uh, X axis DMA read and X axis DMA write to specify the direction, whether it is read or write. In our case, it is read because we are reading from DDR, so they call it the read operation. Now, after that, we are configuring the setup that is written as a separate function, setup uh, interrupt sy system, but the idea is exactly the same. We are passing a pointer. Uh, of DMA controller as well as the IRQ number from X parameter. So if you go to this function here, you will see it looks it looks exactly the same as before. We are initializing the interrupt controller here. Then we are connecting that interrupt controller with the interrupt handler. Now what is here? This is the interrupt handler, X axis VDMA read interrupt handler, and this is a predefined function. So the uh, interrupt service routine, it is not written by you. That uh, interrupt service routine is directly provided by Xilinx. So that is the function here. So what they do is they will automatically uh, acknowledge the interrupt. Okay, so they will clear that interrupt bit. Everything will be automatically done by this interrupt service routine. So you don't have to worry about it. Now, uh, there are some additional features there, which uh, we will see. Soon. So this is the interrupt service routine. You didn't write it. Silinx provider. You just connected that interrupt service routine with that IRQ number. Okay, this one. This is where the IRQ number is coming and the instance point. The interrupt controller. Then you enable the interrupt, and these are all standard. Okay, so this is an additional thing. Again, this function XXVDMA set callback is a, again provided by Silinx. What happens is whenever an interrupt comes, this interrupt service routine is automatically called. Okay. And this interrupt service routine can call another function, another user function. Okay. So if you want to do something extra when an interrupt comes other than acknowledging it and clearing the interrupt with things like that, that you can write separately and you can interface that function with that interrupt service routine using this function, that callback. So you can see uh, this is the syntax, you can point it to DMA controller, and this is the pointer to, again, DMA controller callback actually, and the direction. And these are the two different functions that we are linking. One function is called read callback, and one function is called read callback error. Again, there are two parameters here. This is basically saying this function will be called if there is an interrupt because of an error. Okay? And this function will be called whenever there is a read completion happens, which is the normal operation. Okay? So if the read operation is completed, interrupt will come, interrupt service routine will be called, he will run automatically, and he will call your function if you, if you want that to happen. So here, you can see that function here, and currently that function does nothing but just print like a read callback function is called just to show you like this function is called whenever an intro comes. So this is not actually ISR, but this function is called by the ISR. ISR is provided by Silex. So that's it. So we enable the intro, and this loop basically stores the that vertical stripes, RGB stripes in the buffer okay so you can look at the code and you can easily understand so for entire vertical then we take the horizontal then j 
there are three cases just like our hardware three cases this is one by third of frame one by third of frame one by third of frame only thing to note is that again here you need to consider the byte size it's not like j greater than zero j less than 640 because we have three bytes per pixel so you will have to do something like this yeah that's the only thing and you need to cache the flash because we are using uh, hb port so after you store it in the array you need you need to flash the cache for this data to get stored in the ddr and this is a function which is used for starting the dma now here as i mentioned before once you start the dma uh, you can start and forget about it yeah, so he will run in a loop he will transfer the first frame and he will give you an interrupt if there is another frame he will start and in the next frame with the interrupt so on and so forth since we have only one frame he will start that frame after that he will give interrupt immediately he will again start sending uh, sending the same frame again so the starting address of the frame is like constant so he keeps on sending the same frame which is our our buffer this guy that's it and uh, we remain in an infinite loop so we are remaining in an infinite loop this guy is keep on sending this frame back to back in a loop and interrupt might be coming and whenever interrupt comes we should be seeing this function and uh, on the screen since we stored this uh, three stripes of colors in our memory on the screen we should be seeing the RGB stripes. Okay, so that's it. So let's go ahead and you can choose run configuration and let's configure it. Standalone application. Since I have Bitstream here, I can program also from here and apply. And let's configure the Teratom also. So serial port 115 200. So so now let's go ahead and program and run our software. So run configuration, we can just choose run. So in Paratom, you can keep on seeing read call back function called. Yeah, because after sending each frame, it's going to print this. Okay, so that's why it is going to come back to back. Now on the monitor, you can see the output. So similar to our hardware implementation, same output is coming. So our software driver is working fine. I wanted to add a few more things here. One thing is, if you look at our frame buffer here, you can see it is declared as a global variable, okay, outside all the functions. So everything works. Suppose you declare it as a local variable. Suppose you put it inside the main. Now it is a local variable and there won't be any compilation error because this, this variable is not used anywhere other than the main function. Okay. Now if I program my FPGA and run the software, let's see. Okay, he is running, but you will see like no print is coming here and the screen is blank. I can tell you that means your software is not working. Okay. So why is that? It is because uh, this memory allocation failed. So remember uh, during our image processing time, we did uh, dynamic allocation and that time, if you remember, I increased the heap size because the system is allocating dynamic memory from heap. Now, if you have functions, okay, so the variables in the function that is allocated from the stack memory. And now you have a very large variable which has to be allocated from the stack. And by default, stack size is only hex 2000. And that's not enough for, for this array. So in this case, you need to increase the stack size. So remember, you need to increase the heap size if you are taking a lot of memory dynamically. You need to increase stack size if you are using a lot of memory by a variable inside a function. If it is a global variable that is uh, allocated uh, separately, okay, so to really understand it, 
you need to understand the format of the ELF file but anyway so let's see how much memory you need so this is 1080 p 1080 by 1920 times 3 this is the size so in hex this much okay 5 eec so we need to get more than that in the stack so let's give 60 followed by 60 followed by 4 zeros we need to yeah at least 2000 let's add this okay should be enough save it and run again And this time it's working again on the screen also it is working so keep that in mind uh, another simple application that you can develop okay let me show you so that uh, we can make advantage of this callback function okay so remember this function is called uh, whenever an interrupt is received whenever he finishes transmitting one frame so what i can do is i can just make my screen to blink in black and white right so let me do one thing so let me remove this initialization for rgb even if you have it, it doesn't make any difference and i need to make all pixels white and uh, keep it like that for a second say and after that keep all cells as black and keep it for one second so you feel like your screen is uh, blinking in black and white so let's do something like that so i need to use the same buffer in that function also so let me make it back to global and here okay so let's say like i need to make everything zero so so for that you can use for loop or there's a better function called mem set function memory set if you want to initialize memory with some constant you can use this function so this is the syntax mem set okay address of the buffer starting address okay and uh, it, what data you want to initialize so it's zero x zero zero and how much data so how much data frame size right that will be data so frame size and we need to blink alternatively so let's have a variable which is a static int, int i equal to zero so if i is zero i will do this and i will make uh, i one and next time i will make all pixels one so if you make rgb one you will get white if you make rgb zero you will get okay, so this now the problem with this is if you do like that we are getting getting interrupt after each frame so uh, after each frame it will be becoming black and white so our our frequency is 60 hertz so if this happens at a rate of 60 hertz uh, you won't feel that blinking effect you may constantly see white okay because of our persistence of issue so let's put some sleep here sleep one and uh, so what is going to happen so i already have sleep touch so remember to add that what is going to happen is you will get an interrupt okay after transmitting one frame you will come here and uh, you will make it black or white after that you will make a delay of one second so any interrupt which is coming within this one second will be ignored okay so that's what is going to happen the dma controller he will still work okay he is always working constantly but there won't be any more interrupt because this place i am sleeping for one second okay just for a demonstration so let's save it and let me run once again 
So you could see like it is blinking but not all pixels are changing. There are black pixels in white and white pixels in black because uh, this is not fully updated in the RAM. So that's why I added this CLD cache flash here so that it directly updated in the DRAM from the cache. So let's rerun this time. Now let's see the output. And you can see like this time it's just blinking. Now you can exploit this read callback. So this is a very useful function. Okay, in future you may use it for any purpose. We can exploit this function to decide what should happen once a frame is successfully transmitted. Okay, so that's for this tutorial. I'll be sharing all the code to it. Please try yourself. Thank you. Bye bye.